Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Discover Indonesia, the Emerald of Equator. First and foremost, I'd like to convey my greetings to our fellow Buddhist friends who are joining this event from around the world. It's an honor for Indonesia, which is represented by Patria, to be able to attend IBYE this year again. Indonesia is a country with many islands and a maritime country. Indonesia itself has 34 provinces with a diversity of culture, religion, race, and many more. In addition, Indonesia has other names, which are Nusantara and the Emerald of Equator, just like the title of our presentation. Are you curious? Let's explore this country together. Okay. So, the first island in Indonesia that I'd like to introduce is Kalimantan, which is the Indonesia part of the island Borneo, shared by Brunei Darussalam, Indonesia, and Malaysia. For the interesting place, we have to go Katulistiwa, or the Equator Monument, located on the equator in Pontianak, Indonesia. It marks the, the division between the northern and southern hemispheres. Next, for cultural exchange. Beside Pontianak, there is also Singkawa, the large number of Chinese citizens who follow Buddhist and Confucianism, making the city dub the city of the thousand temples. Various annual Chinese tradition have routinely held here. In fact, one of the parades held every Chap Go Mei, the Tatung Parade, is said to be the largest in the world. The parade is a blend of Chinese and Dayak culture. Next, for the SDG activities. From Singkawang, we can continue the journey to Banjarmasin. Banjarmasin has many rivers that are used as trade roads. Pasar Terapung is a tradition market that operates on the Martapura River. The concept is almost similar to the float market in Thailand. The goods trade are natural resources and snakes using keloto or simple motorized boats as transportation. Next, Priska can continue the presentation. Okay, the next destination for the SDG activities is the Darawan Islands, located in Brow Regency, a coastal plain that was nominated as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in 2005. Darawan has the nickname Prison Island because of its natural beauty. White sand and clear water make it a suitable place for you lovers of water sports, such as snorkeling and diving. The underwater ecosystem that is still awake allows us to see coral reefs, small fish and even rare fish, jellyfish and green sea turtles. Green sea turtles conservation here allows us to see the process of laying eggs until they hatch. Next, in Buddhist-related activities, for our final destination, we have to Balikpapan City, which has a hidden gem, namely Mahavihara Buddha Mangala. This temple is equipped with a magnificent standing Buddha in front of it. Beside this golden temple, there is also a Dhammasala. Inside, there is a large statue of Buddha Varnibana wrapped in gold. Next, let's head to Sumatra. Thank you, Rizka. Now we'll move on to the next island. It is the Sumatra Island. Sumatra is the second largest of the greater Sunda Island in the Indonesian archipelago. It is separated in the northeast from the Malay Peninsula by the Strait of Malacca and in the south from Java by the Sunda Strait. Let me begin this island by introducing you some interesting places to visit, such as Weah Island and Zero Kilometer Monument. Weah Island, where Sabang City is located, is a small active volcanic island to the northwest of Sumatra. It is the northwestern limit of the Indonesian archipelago and it is situated at the entranceway of the Malacca Strait. Well, the zero-kilometer monument is positioned at Weh 
westernmost point which marks the starting point of Indonesia. It makes for a popular meeting point for locals and foreigners when the sun drops off the edge of Indonesia. Now, let's explore one of the famous historical temples in Indonesia, Muaro Jambi Temple Compound Site, one of Indonesia's national cultural heritage sites and also one of the richest archaeological sites on Sumatra Island. It is a historical Buddhist site, not only for the Indonesia, but for the Chinese and Tibetan people because Muara Jambi is where Atisa Dupankara learned from Sherlin Pa Dharmakir. It is situated in Muara Jambi Regency, Jambi Province. It is also one of the largest temple complexes in Indonesia, which was constituted as a legacy during the reign of Sriwijaya and Malay kingdoms in Jambi. Next part will be presented by Shailani. Thank you, Cornelia. Next, we proceed to cultural exchange in Sumatra. Indonesia has one particular cuisine that was once chosen as the most delicious food in the world, and that's rendang. Most common is beef rendang, originated from Minangkabau, West Sumatra, and where water buffalo was traditionally used as the meat. It has spread from across Indonesia to other Southeast Asian countries, and is served among the Malay community in Malaysia, Singapore, Brunei, and Southern Philippines. Next, let's head to South Sumatra, where we can find Gunding Sriwijaya dance, a traditional dance that contains elements of Palembang culture. People believe that this dance once was inspired by the glory of the Sriwijaya Kingdom as the biggest kingdom in Sumatra Island. Every movement of this dance comes with a combination of Buddhism culture, Buddhist meditation, and Batanghari custom culture. Since this dance originally comes from the region around the Batanghari River, People believe that this dance should be played by nine people. Now, let's head to Java Island. Moving on to the next one, we are going to introduce you to the most populous island in Indonesia. What else if it is not the Java Island? Java Island, which is inhabited by approximately 145 million people, was once the most populous island in the world in 2019. On this island, precisely in central Java, we can find a Buddhist monastery in the city of Semarang called the Tanah Putih Temple. Indonesia establishment among organizations in Indonesia. This monastery holds a devotional puja every Sunday and sometimes also holds Pindapata which is certainly very related to the activities of Buddhism, such as reading the Parita and donating food to the Sangha. Now, let's move and travel around Magelang. Here, we can find one of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites, the magnificent Borobudur Temple. It is the world's biggest Buddhist monument and was built in a hilly area. Borobudur Temple itself has numerous reliefs panels around the walls of the monument with narrate Buddhist tale stories. Obviously, this is significantly correlated to the Buddhism activities, which is to learn Buddhism more in depth through cultures and one of the SDG aspects, which is the culture and innovation aspect. Furthermore, Borobudur Temple is one of the most famous tourist attractions in the world. Hence, Borobudur Temple is always crowded with both local and foreign tourists. This tourist activity contributes to the economic growth as one of SDG's aspects. And as foreign tourists are required to pay for visas and transactions made during their visit. Magelang is a nice city, isn't it? After visiting Magelang, we will continue our trips to Yogyakarta, a city near Magelang. Yogyakarta is considered as a spatial region, hence, it is called the spatial region of Yogyakarta. It is a city renowned as the center of education and has a myriad of cultures. For instance, Wayang Kulit. Wayang Kulit is a famous traditional drama performance and the stories are usually based on folklore such as Ramayana and Mahabharata. Both folklores are originally made in India. However, 
the Japanese people modify the stories. And last but not least, Indonesia's national costume, Batik! And then it will be presented by my friend, Yukai. Hello, hello! So, have you all heard of Batik? So, it is an Indonesian technique of wax dresses dyeing applied to the whole cloth originated from Java. It was inscribed by UNESCO in 2009 on the representative list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity. The city of Yogyakarta has a cultural and economic aspect that exists in one aspect of the SDGs. As already mentioned, Batik is an Indonesian culture that is already very well known by foreign countries. So, when tourists visit Indonesia, buying batik clothes will certainly increase the economy of Indonesia. In addition, the Ramayana Ballet, puppet show, or wayang kulit can also be watched by these tourists. The recommended hotel after visiting Magelang is Hotel Tentrum in Yogyakarta. This hotel is very strategic with destinations that we will visit. We are going to visit Karang Kritis Beach, a beach located in the south of Yogyakarta. This beach presents a very beautiful scenery, especially in the evening while enjoying the sunset of the sun. It is famous for its story about Nirora Kidul or Queen of the Southern Sea. Green is said to be the favorite color of the queen. That's why every visitor on beaches along Java is forbidden to wear or use anything that has green elements because the queen will reportedly attract people and take them out to the sea. So guys, have you enjoyed the beautiful dust at Karang Kritis Beach? Well, don't miss this one destination because at night, the atmosphere is more lively. We will go to Alun Alun Kidul, a city that lives at night. It's located behind the Yogyakarta place. Alun Alun Kidul also has two humongous banyan trees that are located nearby. There is a game called Masangin, and it is believed that only clean-hearted people can walk through between the two banyan trees with closed eyes. Tired of walking all day? Take it easy, guys, because the distance from Alun Alun to the Hotel Tentrum only takes approximately 14 minutes. Next, we will go to other destination. Uh, yes, so next we will go to Bali. So the first thing I want to tell you guys about is the cultural exchange in Bali. So the first thing I want to say about this about Garuda Wisnu Pinchana, or we usually call it as the Geweka. Garuda Wisnu Pinchana is one of the cultural parks and tourist destinations in Bali, which is located at Tungasan. Foreign tourists who visit Geweka might be able to learn plenty of Bali's culture, as not only it's spacious and picturesque, but also the history of the place, traditional events, as well as Belinese traditional dance and performance and authentic season. And the second thing I want to tell you about, uh, tell you guys about in this cultural exchange is Subak, the Subak watering system in Baalang. The Subak system is an ancient irrigated agricultural practice of the Bali Island. It has been in existence and practice from generation to generation for hundreds of years and amazingly still continuously practiced today in modern Indonesia. This irrigation system also serves small land holders where lowland paddy monoculture is practiced in major in. And then we go next to Buddhist related activities placed in Bali. So the first thing I want to explain is Brahma Vihara Arama. Brahma Vihara Arama is Bali's largest Buddhist monastery located in the hills of Lanja. It was built between 1960 and 
1970 and officially opened in 1973. The monastery covers a hectare of hillside with numerous built beautiful places. This monastery opens meditation activities for everyone within three days to three months related to Buddhist activities held every year. And then we will go to SDG project in Bali and I will give it to my friend David, David, to brother David. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, thank you. Dear. So next I'm going to present about SDG projects in Bali. So there is one project called One Island, One Voice. It's a program held by the government of Bali to maintain the cleanliness of the beaches in Bali, especially the beauty and ecosystem of the beach. This is included as the 14th Sustainable Development Goals, namely life below water, so that the aquatic ecosystem is protected by minimizing waste coming from the beach that is carried into the sea. Okay, after exploring Bali, we will continue to the western and eastern Nusa Tenggara. Okay, I'm going to continue with one of the SDG projects in eastern Nusa Tenggara, the Komodo Island. Okay, Komodo Island is included in the 15 Sustainable Development Goals, Life on Land because Komodo dragons on the islands are protected by the wild world nature reserves and, the, and they monitor the Komodo National Park to maintain the ecosystem where Komodo dragons live to protect them and uh, get them away from extinction. Okay, that's the SDG projects in Bali and the Satangara. We will continue with Okay, hello everyone. Now I'm going to explain the interesting place to visit in East and West Nusa Tenggara. So, first of all, I'm going to talk about Mount Rinjani. What is Mount Rinjani? Mount Rinjani is a mountain located on the island of Lombok, West Nusa Tenggara, and it is the second highest volcano in Indonesia with an altitude of approximately 3,700 meters above sea level and the third highest mountain in Indonesia after Mount Jayawijaya and Mount Kerinci. Compared with the more famous mountain tracks, Rinjani offers adventurous scenery, waterfalls, rainforest, wildlife, hot spring, caves, demanding hiking, pristine lake, interesting culture, and of course, the volcano itself. Okay, now last but not least, we will go to Gili. La, uh, we will go to oh, Labuan Bajo, I'm sorry. Okay, Labuan Bajo is a fishing town located at the western end of the large island of Flores in the Nusa Tenggara region of East Indonesia. So it was placed in East Nusa Tenggara, as you can see. Uh, this enchanting harbor town is purposefully being upgraded to cope with more travelers. It's, uh, uh, it's the jumping off point to see prehistoric dragon at Komodo National Park, which plays a crucial role to the world's biggest lizard, the Komodo dragons. And be awed by the world-class diving, and those who stay a little longer will fall in love with Bajo. Okay, now next we will move on to Sulawesi. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, Sulawesi, once known as Celebes, is the fourth biggest island in Indonesia. Okay, so let's start with Buddhist activities there. In North Sulawesi, we can find Guan Hin Kyung Temple, a Chinese temple located in the heart of Manado's Chinatown, and is most frequented by tourists because of its stunning architecture and interesting history. It was established in 1819 during the Qing Dynasty in China, and was initially built with only bamboo wood. It is also popular amongst the locals for hosting various festi annual festivals and for being a place of worship for the followers of Tree Dharma, 
Confucianist, Taoist, and Buddhist. It has been around for 335 years and currently stands as the oldest temple in the city and one of the oldest temples in East Indonesia. Next, will be presented by my twin, Melani. Okay, thank you, my twin sister. Uh, next uh, is the place for cultural uh, exchange. Okay, uh, so if Egypt has mummies, well, we have it too. Uh, Tarat Raja, or Land of the Heavenly Kings in South Sulawesi, has a major cultural ritual, which is the funeral rites, or known as Ramu Solo. To the Tordian people, uh, this tradition is a big deal and it can go for days. Uh, the rituals are only held during the dry season months of June to September. Uh, after the Ramu Solo, the deceased are hoisted up to a stone grave in a cliff. Uh, wealthier families often have craftsmen to carve wooden statues uh, with the departed. Uh, physical features and are placed on the cliffside graves. Uh, every three years, uh, the bodies are assumed to be cleaned and dressed in new clothes. Uh, the mishkatskets are fixed and replaced as well. This ceremony of cleaning corpses, or known as uh, manene, uh, usually takes place in the month of August. Next, a uh, place uh, interesting to visit is the Wakatobi Islands, which is located in uh, Southeast uh, Sulawesi Province and is a UNESCO Marine Biosphere Reserve diving part located in the uh, Coral tri Triangle. Why is it called as Wakatobi? Because the name uh, derived from the first letters of the four islands in the south of Sulawesi, which are Wangiwangi, Kalidupa, Taumia, and Binongko. Uh, these islands are internationally renowned as offering some of the best coral reef dive sites in the world. You can come here uh, to experience good snorkeling and diving. And please allow me to proceed to the very east of Malaysia, which is Papua one of the largest islands in the world. It is inhabited by various tribal groups and speaks various uh, local languages. And one of the biggest number of tribal groups living here is the Dani tribe, uh, who inhabited Wamena in Balium Valley. And this uh, tribe has a traditional house called the Pane House, uh, which has various kinds, different functions and purposes as well. The three types are which are Pane for men, Ebe for women, and Wamai for fixed space. Uh, aside from the Hanai house, they also have traditional clothes uh, called koteka, uh, which is worn by the men to cover their genitals. And for the women, uh, they wear dress skirts and no cap. Uh, but don't worry, uh, we can still see them uh, wearing those uh, during festivals, uh, although now they have shifted to normal clothes. Uh, one of the fam famous uh, festivals uh, is Bellium Valley Festival, which is held every year in August. It's a very special occasion uh, where all various tribes such as Dani, Lani, and Yali are present to celebrate their uh, annual event. Many shows are also performed, uh, such as simulations of wow between tribes, families, and traditional dances. Okay, uh, over to Jocelyn, please. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to explain about the SDG an interesting place to visit, which is Raja Ampat. So in Papua, there's a famous place called Raja Ampat. The name Raja Ampat is based on a legend. Once there, a husband and a wife searching for food found six dragon eggs at the bank of River Waikeo. Five of them hatched into four princes and one princess, while the sixth egg turned into a stone. The river bank is turned as a worshipping place for the local believers. You can go snorkeling and enjoy the beautiful cor corals and fishes there. Raja Ampat is already preserved by the government to keep the ecosystem there safe. It is because Raja Ampat has attracted many tourists that wanted to take the corals home. As it takes such a long time for a coral to be formed, the government must protect the corals from the exploiters, or else the fishes won't have a home to live. They also need to keep the fishes safe from illegal fishers and the water from being polluted. Thus, we also need to participate in keeping the corals and the fishes safe as one of the sustainable development goals, which is life underwater. So I think that's it for our presentation. Thank you for your attention and we can't wait to see you in Indonesia. Right, thank you very much, Team Indonesia, for the wonderful and, and very diverse uh, presentation of you know, tourist attractions. And you've also very well covered um, all the categories that uh, we you know, requested for. So thank you, Team Indonesia. And now let us move to the land of smiles, Thailand.